What up everybody? Today we are going to be welding on some new armor. I believe I got this one from Marlin Crawler. Kind of looks like a turtle shell. It goes right over the top of that third member. We're going to weld that on. I had to do a little bit of grinding earlier to get that to sit down into place. Uh, we've already welded on the truss and um, then we're going to flip this puppy over and we're going to add the third member in there. I'm going to have to cut this axle a little bit more so I can fit the e-locker section because I'm going to be making this rear axle and I will make the front axle both e-lockers. So that's going to be a fun little experiment to try out. All right, let's get to some welding. because of all the weight on the axle with the truss and now the that protection, we ratched a, um, ratched a ratchet strap. We stuck a ratchet strap on here, cinched it down, put some little padding on there, and then that holds it into place. So we were able to spin it around and it won't, all the counterweight won't flip it one way or another or try to stick it in a certain way. So now it holds it into place and I can uh, weld the right side up. Genius. <laughs> We're back at the snail trail shop now because I brought some of the wrong components over at a Hustle Nuts' house and we had to come back here, but we did all the welding um, that we were going to do so we can finish our job back at the snail trail shop. So I was dropping the e-locker third member into the housing and it wasn't fitting. There was actually a gap here on, I would assume this is going to be the driver's side, um, because it looks like the this U part here, the carrier that holds the carrier bearing is much larger than the, the opposite side is. And so you can see how there's some yellow paint on here. That's because I put some yellow paint on the inside to figure out where I was rubbing. And we're definitely rubbing right there. So I'm probably going to get a, um, like a button head here and tighten a button head in there and try to make it as flush as possible. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough for me. I don't think it is. So I'm also considering tapping this area and bending it back down and away from the, the bolt up top here. Um, and it's not gonna be that big of an issue uh, because I do have all that new protection that I just put on underneath. So that's what I'm gonna be doing now. I'm gonna clearance that area a little bit more so I can fit the e-locker inside. So here's what I found out works really well for knocking this uh, section down and I'm making a lot of progress is I shoved this ball peen hammer down into the axle shaft area and turned it for that round side to be face down and then I can whack it with a big old sledge and hit it right there on the head and it seems to be knocking everything down really well. So just a little bit farther and I think we'll be good. I also had to cut this little notch out for the e-locker section. Um, I was hitting that. I was finally down far enough. So trimmed that thing out of the way and a little bit more clearance here. And then we should be able to drop the e-locker in to make sure it fits right. Then we're going to have to cut a section away in this area and make additional four additional holes in this housing to fit that e-locker section all right here. So there's additional holes on there. Meanwhile, Hussman's over here ripping apart these uh, axles and taking the e uh, drum brakes off and we're going to be throwing e-brake or uh, excuse me disc brake setups on there so we got that he built a little jig for the press um, that I can show you guys in a little bit um, and so he's ripping all those apart while I'm finessing and being very gentle with this axle housing and uh, getting two things done at once it's really nice so here's a cool little jig that Hussman made it's got this base with the four bolts that'll bolt onto the base of your uh, axle there. And then he uh, trimmed this up and welded it on here. 
so that it'll slide evenly through these bars and come up and turn 90 degrees and sit down on here or sit down on these plates and hold it nicely. So then when we push down on the axle shaft, it'll push it through the drum brake setup and out, and then we'll just end up with the axle shaft. This is how you would redo the bearings and things, which we will be doing a little later. Booyah. A little bit. <laughs> we'll take a five minute recess to clean up. <laughs> I should have been wearing my brown pants. <laughs> There we go, I hammered it down a bunch. There's some yellowness in there that you guys can see. There's nothing on that screw anymore, which is awesome. Uh, so that means we are set. I'm gonna set this guy down, make sure that everything's nice and smooth. Once again, I had to trim a little bit more off of here uh, because it was hitting this corner on the outside. So I had to give it a little bit more room. But now uh, we're ready to set it down, mark some additional holes that we're gonna have to drill and tap. So here's a little view of how much I had to indent that area, which wasn't a whole lot, but I uh, did have to beat it down a little bit. So there you go, took the paint off, just kind of cleaned this area up. So there we go. We marked in red pen, which is really hard to see right here, where we're gonna have to cut. We found we were able to get a corner and then I dipped a bolt into the yellow paint and I was able to get a bunch of marks on where we're gonna need to drill some holes and set up uh, the tap and die set to get our new bolts or new studs to go through there. So uh, that's what we're up to now. I'm gonna measure this out and uh, cut away and cut this section out and uh, we should be able to Drill, tap, and die those, and then we'll be having a third member. So the reason I needed to make this cut right here was because of this opening inside the e-locker section of the third member. And the reason that's there is because when you engage or disengage, I think it's engaged now. So when you disengage the e-locker, that pops out and it comes all the way over to this edge right on the side. So I needed to make that cut so that when it disengages, it can actually open and close and it has the space to do so. So now that that's all done and everything is cut out, we're gonna drill these spots out for the additional and new bolts that are in there. And I'm probably gonna weld a puddle right here, grind it smooth and make a flat spot for that one that's only like halfway on. And I think that's how I'm gonna solve that. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm not drilling straight down because I'm having to push against the weld puddle that I created because that's a harder material. It's not drilling as easily. So once it grips, I straighten that bit out and drill straight down. Hopefully this doesn't hurt me in the future. So I've been hand threading the last few bolts in trying to get everything lined up and I'm just having a heck of a time where I did that weld because I think the weld is a harder material than the actual housing is. And I think it actually messed my bit up. So I'm gonna put this aside and I got, I purchased these drill bits that are just impact ready. So they slap right into your impact gun. They have the drill, they have the, um, the tap included so you should just be able to screw right down and it'll tap it for you on some of the smaller versions they also have at the top they have it has like a countersink setup so that you can straight up ta drill tap and countersink with some of those small ones so let's see how this works worked pretty well but that was one that was not didn't have the weld that was one of the ones that we were uh, just goes through straight through the housing so now let's try the tough one
Broke it. Shit. I was able to get that bit out. I was lucky. I used a punch and just sort of beat the hell out of it. And because it's hardened, it like broke apart. The drill bit is smaller, so it was never really in the metal. It was only a few of the threads. So the bit broke, but on the positive side, it actually started cutting some threads. So I went out and I bought some more um, taps sets, another tap set, because my other one is, now, is dull because of this problem. And I'm now gonna throw this in here and try to tap it again. Now that it has some threads, um, from that impact bit, I, I'm really hoping this is gonna catch and uh, work in our favor, we'll find out. Another thing I did was I bought some Tap Magic, easy tap cutting fluid. Um, I've never used this stuff before. I've never uh, actually ever seen it. So I'm gonna try it for the first time and hopefully that'll also uh, solve our problems. So uh, we shall see. through that's exciting i'm gonna go up and down a few times just to make sure that everything's cleared out and it seems to be threading nicely oh that was nervous i didn't want to screw up this axle in any way well now i'm gonna fill these holes with some studs and bolts or maybe i'll just pull them all out again and uh cover it because now I have to clean, do a good thorough cleaning of this axle, and then I'm gonna paint it up. Yes, that's awesome. I'm glad that worked. Woo! Well, I might've jumped ahead of myself just a little by painting the axle housing. Um, I just got excited. I do have two things that I'm still gonna need to weld on here, spring perches and shock mounts but uh, I can grind down just that section to uh, weld those on. I don't think that's gonna be a very big issue. Um, got the vast am amount of painting done, covered the center section so that I don't get any paint anywhere that there really shouldn't be. So what I'm gonna be doing now is I'm assembling the axle. I'm gonna put the third member in. I'm going to put the axle shafts in, the ones that Hussman uh, assembled for us while uh, I was working on cutting out the section for the third member. And then I'm going to button up or finish doing the breather little section. And I believe that's really about it. Um, after that, our next step is throwing this underneath the rig and dialing in the rear suspension and figuring out what I'm going to be doing for that. So I'm super excited to get this thing finished and finally underneath the vehicle. So uh, let's take care of that now. Third member is on. We did have to redo the hole here on the axle. Uh, it wasn't perfectly aligned, so we put a new helicoil in there and then it had to rearrange that. We also had to drill out both of these holes a little bit wider um, to do better alignment so they fit down into the holes. Um, for the most part, everything else somewhat lined it up. These guys were super tight on the outside as well. All the holes that I did were super tight. Uh, these are going to be my drain plugs because I took the whole drain plug off the bottom and now I'm going to put bolts into there and uh, be able to pull those bolts out and so it all layers out. Um, only a few things left to do. We've got to put the axles shafts in, um, finish doing this little grommet work right here for the breather, and that's really about it. All right, installing the seal here. Got this little bearing seal pusher kit, which we're gonna try out. Crooked. Try again. There we go. All right, that worked out. And then we put this little O-ring guy around the outside. 
All right. Let's see if you line up. Ooh. So don't be worried if you have this little gap right here. Uh, we just solved the problem on the other side, but what actually ends up happening is when you put these bolts in here, this cap will pull its way over and seat up against here. So uh, just make sure you put that little rubber gasket in there, and then when you bolt this together, which you'll see here in a little bit, you'll see this suck right on over. Here we have it, the final axle. We are, or the, I am finally done with the axle, I should say. Um, I'm super stoked with how this came out. I think it looks great. Um, I don't think you can make a stronger, beefier mini truck axle than this right here. And the next step really is for us to throw it underneath the rig and then start dialing in the rear suspension. So that's gonna be the next video out in just a little bit. So I appreciate you watching. If you like this axle or if you have any suggestions on what I should do, please put them down in the comments below. And like always, my friends, keep crawling.